Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I think I am finally ready to start my fishing trip this morning. I have already got a workout in. I launched my kayak back in the back of a creek back here and came out to the main channel because the plan for today was to do some more ultralight fishing, just trying to catch whatever would bite. And I was going to start today's trip where I ended my last ultralight video. I had worked a section of this main channel ledge down through here and made my way down to this area. And so I was gonna start here and then just keep working my way on down, just fishing for whatever. So I, I launched, got out here and realized, oh crap, I've left my gulp minnows back in the car. So I had to turn around, go all the way back. So finally, it's about 7.30 in the morning now, I'm finally out here and getting ready to get started. But I'm gonna do some ultralight fishing today. I also have my skipjack rod here with me too. And I have seen some skipjacks. They're kind of just in smaller schools, kind of busting out over the main channel. I mean, you're talking 60 feet deep out there, but they're up near the surface, just kind of chasing small school of these schools of small shad just kind of sporadically out there so i'm not going to go out there and actively chase down those skipjack because i don't really need any bait today but if some of those schools start busting over here beside me within casting range we're going to try to catch us a few just for the fun of it but uh, anyway again the plan today is going to be do some ultralight fishing i'm going to take a section of this ledge and just keep working my way down throwing it down trees up under these overhanging trees or some you know rocks that have busted off this ledge here and this ledge just comes straight down it gets deep really quick and that last trip out a few days ago i got bluegill green sunfish smallmouth bass i mean it's just a variety of species you can catch down here and they'll all eat the gulp minnow so that's what i'm gonna do today finally about ready to get started let's do it all right let's make our first cast here like i said i'm just Starting out here, kind of approximately where I ended that last trip a few days ago, and I think we're going to start out with a fish here as I bring my line up into the tree branches. My gosh, look what I've done. Already goofing up on camera here, first thing. I may just bring that dang bluegill up right over that branch. That's, a, that's actually a sunfish, and that's a pretty good size one, too. How the heck have I done this? There we go. <laughs> Boy, if that's, I tell you what, folks, this day ain't starting out well for me, is it? I have to delay my trip because I'm a, a goober and left my most important piece of gear this morning, the cold minnows, in the car. Now, first cast, I ended up pulling my line over a tree. This is actually a, a really nice sunfish, though. I'll tell you what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to keep a few of these and try to keep them alive in a bucket. I'm not going to be going catfishing tomorrow, but hold on. Boy, I'm about to look at that right there. Big old spider web I'm about to roll into. But anyway, I will try to keep these alive here for a couple days until my next catfishing trip and see if I can't use them. I'm going to put this one on the board here for you. I, tell you, I brought a little measuring board with me. It don't start till eight inches, but that in there is probably around six, six inches or so. All right, buddy. Got me a bucket there. Remembered my lid today. Well, it's funny. I get out of the car this morning. I remember the bucket. I remember the lid for the bucket this time. But the gulp minnow, the thing that's going to catch the fish, not so much. <laughs> oh, crap. I did it again. Let's see if a fish will eat that thing and knock it off that branch for me. How awesome would that be? No such luck this time. No, I do have a fish on there too. <laughs> I do have a fish. Come on, fish, knock it off that branch for me. Oh, crap. Well, that worked out. I'm going to have to check my line. <laughs> Another one. Whatever it takes, y'all. Whatever it takes to get that fish in. <laughs> Out here cutting trees with two-pound line. This one here. I'm going to let this one go. I'd hooked him kind of deep. Actually, he looks okay. I thought I might have got him down there in the gills. I'll throw him in the bucket. I wasn't sure if he's going to make it or not, but I think he'll be all right. We'll throw him in the bucket, too. That's another one there. It's probably five inches or so. We'll stick him back here. I'm just going to try to keep me a, a few alive. You know, here in the summertime, it's hard to keep live bait 
alive in a small container what i'll do is i'll get that bucket home first off i'll switch out my water when i get back to the car just put fresh water in there i get home i'll put some frozen bottles of water down in there to cool the temperature down try to keep it cool the next couple days and then put my aerator on it so that we've got water circulating and and you know aerating it for them there that'll generally help keep a few alive and them smaller containers like that five gallon bucket i do have a 10 gallon container i've got a video on how i made that on my channel but um, lugging that 10 gallon container out here in the kayak and then in the car to get home it's you know 10 gallons of water at eight pounds a gallon that's 80 pounds you got to lift and lug around and five gallon containers easier you just can't keep as many baits alive for as long a period of time but uh, i'm gonna try to keep a few of these sunfish alive for a couple days until my next catfishing trip definitely not going catfishing tomorrow for sure um, day after is looking a little bit questionable as far as the weather goes but hopefully we'll be able to put these things to use Oh, there's a beaver over there. I hope he don't... Oh, I got a fish too. Beaver's going on by. Oh, that's... A, what is that? That's something dark. Is that a smallmouth? Is that a carp of some kind? I don't know what this is, y'all. It's dark, whatever it is. I don't know. Oh my gosh, he broke me off, whatever it was. Ah, he run me across something down there. Crap, I don't know what that was. It was dark like a smallmouth, but I'm wondering if it wasn't like a little small carp or buffalo or something. It run me across that branch right there. I was focusing on that beaver as it went by. I like beaver normally, but not that kind right there. Them, that kind right there is mean. <laughs> well, let's tie another jig on. I'm batting a thousand this morning between forgetting the gulp in the car, losing a bunch of time, casting over trees, breaking off on fish. We're going to have to get it together here if we're going to get a video out of today. I'm going to have to get my act together. I'm swimming right there. <laughs> I saw my line just a bolting. Y'all, sadly, this right here, well, he's all wrapped up in my line. Look at that. He's got himself all tangled up in the fins and everything. This right here, I've caught several fish coming down through here. I got a spider right here on me, too. Look at this. I got a dang spider. Man, every time I try to film something, something goes wrong this morning. That right there. It's about the biggest bluegill I've caught, though. I've caught a bunch of little three-inchers. But it has been hard times finding any better quality fish this morning. That trip I filmed a few days ago, I was getting green sunfish just constantly all down this ledge. And now, where I've picked up here today and moving down, I'm not getting near as many sunfish. It's more bluegill but they're smaller quality. That's like where the sunfish ended, the bluegill have started coming down this ledge. I don't know if they just don't live well together or what. It's just been one of them days for me from forgetting the gulp in the car, getting caught in trees, got spiders crawling on my head while I'm trying to talk. <laughs> it's just been one thing after another i think i got another one of them small bluegill here yep i told you all man that's just i've gotten out of the sunfish and on to the bluegill i may end up going back up there and hitting there's another one just like that i may end up going back there and hit some of them uh, same stretch that I hit in that last video before it's said and done just to 
try to get me a few. Boy, that one's going crazy now. Come here, bluegill. Okay. Get out of here, because we're getting too many of them. Hell, I brought that bucket with me today. That was a kiss of death bringing that bucket. I should have known I wouldn't find any more than big sunfish when I had that with me. But uh, I may just need to go up there on that ledge a little more, further up on it, I mean, and get back there where I was getting them the other day. I'm going to set my pole down here just a second. That dang spider, man. He's back again. I thought I'd flip him out of the kayak. I hope he's gone that time, man. That thing was on my head a minute ago while I had that fish on. I don't, I'm not real scared of spiders like some people are, but I don't want them crawling on my head either. Especially them big ones like that. I must have acquired him while I was near one of them trees over there. Something got me then. Might be a little better fish. No. Nope. A little better bluegill. No, that's finally one of them sunfish again. I tell you, I ain't seen many of these. Now, this one here is going to go in the bucket too. That'll be three of them I got in the bucket now. That one there ain't quite as big as some of them I was getting the other day though. Nevertheless, he'll go in there. We'll try to feed them to something here in a couple days. Got a light breeze that's kind of pushing me down this ledge. It's perfect. I'm not fishing any one piece of cover very much. I'm not making any cast to it before it moves me along, but it's moving me at just the perfect speed to be able to cover some water down through here. This right here is a long tree that comes out. I'm going to reel this in and I'll make another cast on the other side of it over there before I get blown past it. I'll be something on that tree anyway. It's fun fishing though, y'all, other than when things go wrong. <laughs> it's just a relaxing way to fish. You get a bunch of bites. Not off this particular tree, obviously. But uh, in general, you get a bunch of bites coming down through here. There's some rocks right there that comes off. I'll drop that right there by it. Something's after me. Something's swimming. I knew they had to be some fish somewhere right there in that little area between that tree and the way that rock come out. Let's see, small bluegill though. You catch a bunch of these doing this technique. I'm using my 164th ounce jig heads and one inch gulp minnows on my ultralight setup. I got links down in the video description for all my gear, but this is the same setup I use in my other ultralight videos. If you've watched my channel before, you've seen it. It just, it works. It catches fish, so I keep doing it. There's something. Let's see what this is. Is that a little bass? I believe this is a little bass right here, a little smallmouth. Just a small one. I got some better smallmouth the other day. This one here ain't going to quite measure up, but... Oh, he just threw my gulp off, too. Doggone him. I can boat lift this one. I got two pound line. Can't do that on the bigger fish, but... Smaller ones like this, I can get by with it. I'm going to pedal up here and try to make a few more casts on that. I can get him unhooked. There we go. A little smally, a little small jaw. I'm gonna stand up here and show you. There's a little rock that comes out and then drops straight off. And that's the bluegill and that smallmouth right there as my jig's falling down on the edge of it. So we're gonna put another gulp on and go up here and make a few more casts on that. Might get some more fish, might not. But we'll at least try. nice thing about this you know this style of fishing is you just get a ton of bites I mean you just even a day like today where I keep messing things up casting into trees and and 
you know, wasting time for getting stuff in the car, you still come out and by the time I'm done out here this morning, hell, I'll have 50 fish by the time it's all said and done. Let me just try to make another cast right there by that rock. There's a piece of brush out there in front of it too. Maybe holding some fish. I'm gonna have to get up here and well, something followed it out. There's a little bass that followed it out right there. I'm gonna go back up here and just get repositioned so I can hit it better. All right, let's make us another cast over there by that rock. This water's real clear, so I can just see my jig just fall straight down. And I'm wondering the way that rock juts out like that if it ain't got like a little, almost like a roof for fish to be hanging out under it. And that jig just falls down right there in their face when they're on the edge of it. I ain't getting nothing then. I just make one more cast on there before this wind. Good gosh. I can't cast for nothing today, y'all. Can't cast for nothing. I got a fish though. Port, that's the nice thing about this. Ultralight and the jigs here, even when you screw up, you're still gonna catch fish. <laughs> that's another one of them sunfish. Finally getting back on some here. I thought I was gonna have to go up there and hit that other part of the ledge. These things, I mean, they're just pretty fish. I mean, that's that's what I call aquarium fish right there with the blue and the, the orange and the, they're just neat looking fish. All right, y'all, that's number four in the bucket for the sunfish. I'll we'll make just a couple more casts here at this rock. See if we can get something else on it. It's amazing you come down through here and there'll be trees you throw at and rocks and stuff won't have anything on them. And then you'll come across one that there'll just be hundreds of them on it. I'll never understand why they choose the trees and the brush piles and the rock piles and stuff that they do. What's better? What makes one better than another? But that's how it goes. You just cover some water, throw it a bunch of stuff, and you'll eventually get bit. Something's got me right there. Just like that. I think that's another bluegill. I ain't gonna keep no bluegill today unless I get a you know big one. I might. This size right here, I ain't gonna fool with. We'll keep them sunfish. They tend to stay alive on the hook a little better when catfishing than the bluegill do. I don't know why that is, but well, I got bit just like that, man. As soon as that thing hit the water, I thought I'd wrapped it around the tree over there. That's another one we'll put in the bucket here. This will be number five for us. I may keep, I may keep one or two more in the bucket there. There he is. I'm gonna just switch out that water there when I get back to the car. And then get the aerator on them there at the house, put some frozen bottles of water in there. I don't know, that cooler water just helps keep the live bait alive better in these hot summer months. We, you know, it's August now, so it's hot as blazes out here. Water temps today, I don't have my graph on this kayak, but it's probably low 80s surface temps and bait just don't do as well in the hotter temperatures especially when you got to keep it for multiple days like I'm gonna have to do with these sunfish I'm definitely not fishing tomorrow and the next day weather reports looking questionable probably gonna be a full you know, 48 to 72 hours before I have a chance at using these things. Oh, I got bit right away over there. I know they had to be something. There's a trees you probably can't see coming down in the water. 
That's not one of them sunfish. This will be another one that goes in the bucket right here. He was on it as soon as it hit the water. That's a fat one right there. This is one of the... Oh, that lost the camera. He's knocked my gulp off. This one here, that's probably one of the biggest there of the morning so far. Nice. I'm going to back off here. And I'm going to get rebaited and, and make a few more casts over here. But I'll show you. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. Part of that trees, the very edge of it there is out of the water and it comes off right here. And what you've got here with the lay of the land, I mentioned this ledge comes kind of straight off all the way down through here. I mean, it's very steep. But here, the way the land falls, it's kind of at a, a curve. When it rains, water gets funneled down through here and it's gonna come out right here. The way the land is, you can see stuff that's washed down this hill here with heavy rains. And I find oftentimes, you find a place like this on the ledge, I think just some more stuff gets washed down the hill, just nutrients and bugs and worms and stuff like that. You'll oftentimes catch fish here. So I'm going to get rebaited here. I'm going to make a few more casts at this tray, but I'm going to hit this area here really good too before I move on. Let's see if we can cast back over there by that tree. I'm feeling myself get pecked right away. Yep, well, I about jerked his jaws plumb out of the water. <laughs> That's a bluegill there. Bluegill worth some more than sunfish at. That's who I was throwing over for. Or bass. Wouldn't mind pulling some more smallmouth out of here too. That wouldn't hurt my feelings none. Just trying to skip it up under them trees, them overhanging trees there. I'm getting pecked. Something got me there. There's another one. See what this is. I think this might be another bluegill. All these bluegill I've caught, and this here, hell, this has been one of the better ones. The bluegill I've got this morning have been small. I ain't found no better quality. I'm on Melton Hill Lake today. I don't know if I mentioned that in my intro, but uh, Melton Hill actually has, for public water, this is one of the better quality bluegill fisheries here in East Tennessee. I normally get a few good ones every time I come out here, but it hasn't been the case today. It's been mostly small bluegill and an occasional, well, that was a terrible cast. I skipped it right here beside the kayak and got it over that branch apparently, but by gosh, I got a fish. They're all over that tree right there. Yeah, buddy, this is, this right here actually is the, the best bluegill of the morning right here. You know, Melton Hill, it's just a, one of them places, for whatever reason, they seem to grow a little bigger here. That there, if I was keeping some bluegill today, I'd keep him. I'm going to let him go. You cover enough water and make enough cash, you're probably going to get some better bluegill. And today, I have covered probably, I don't know, 100... 150 yards or so thus far. I've just been slowly making my way along down through here. This technique, it's kind of a slower technique to fish because I'm mostly just letting this jig fall. Once it hits the water, just, that's where the bulk of my bites get, it's just as it's falling down through the water column. So it's hard to, you can't fish it too fast. You're not going to cover miles of water out here in a day, but I can cover several hundred yards this morning and uh, still be off the water at a reasonable hour to do stuff with the girlfriend today, make her happy. She's got a big afternoon plan for us. I can't wait to go get started on a farm tour. I think we're going down to... Sweetwater Valley Farm, which is a uh, ironic name because it's I think it's in Loudon, Tennessee. It's not actually in Sweetwater, but nevertheless, I think we're going there. Can't wait for that. 
and uh, maybe buy some cheese down there because apparently they make it there on the farm. So that's what I have for my afternoon agenda, y'all. <laughs> A little bit better cast. Skip that one a little better. <laughs> Something was eating me up there too. Small bluegill. There's one got hooked up. I was getting just tap, tap, tap. They all over that tree right there. Bluegill. Well, I was about to talk to him. Now I'm just going to tell him to look. He's hopped here. He's wanting to go home with me. He hopped right over here in the in the pocket of my kayak. Get out of here, fish. He just he's running away from home. He said he's tired of living on this tree. But I just cast my okay. Nope, I'm in another branch back there. Doggone it, y'all! I can't cast for diddly poo this morning. What this right here is. Well, he's wound up, whatever it is. That's another one of them sunfish. This one right here, I believe, is going to be. There's an, something else following it right there. That's another sunfish right there with it, right there in the water beside him. <laughs> this one right here is going to be the biggest of the morning, though. This right here is what I was hoping to get today because getting on this size there a few days ago I'm gonna again I brought this little measuring board here with me just throw it down here for you that one's ah quit now ah, he's about seven inches just shy of that eight inch mark on there but that right there will be a quality bait for us if I can keep him alive here for a few days well instantly hit it instantly Maybe another one. And again, there's something following it there. I believe it's another sunfish following it out. These things are so aggressive. I'm going to go ahead and keep this one too. This is going to be the last one I keep. But that's another just fat green sunfish, y'all. This is really good quality. And they are, boy, they don't want to calm down for nothing, do they? <laughs> Come here, you devil. Pretty fish, hard pulling, great fight on the ultralight. I don't know how many that is there in the bucket now, but that's going to be the last one. They're just, in this kind of heat, it's hard to keep a lot of bait alive in a small container like that. That's a lousy cast. I got to get over a little closer. But uh, if I can keep them alive, we're going to try to feed them to something when I get back out there on the next catfishing trip which will probably be here in two or three days, weather permitting. I am happy to get some more of these sunfish, though. You know, when I started out this morning, I covered a little bit of distance there and was only getting a bluegill, just small bluegill. And I thought, I'm going to have to go back up there and hit a section of this ledge that I did on the last trip to be able to get any sunfish today. But... Uh, I kept chugging along here and eventually come across some more. A small one there. I'm going to back off this just a little bit. They seem to be almost right there on the edge of the bank. Yep, right there, man. I mean, I cast almost on the bank. And they were on it instantly. This water, it's super clear. And again, just drop straight off this ledge here. I mean, it gets deep quick, and they're just, at least this school I'm on right here anyways, right up there on the bank. There we go. He's hooked good. A little one there, though. I'm going to let him go. I just like catching these things. They're a lot of fun to catch. Something hit me right away. Yep, I'm hit again. <laughs> This is why ultralight fishing's fun right here. This is a bluegill. You get just a ton of action. And when you get them, you know, six, seven inch sunfish or a six inch and up bluegill or pretty much any size bass, 
they're just a blast to catch. I mean, they just fight so hard on this ultralight and two pound line. You can just have a dang good time and, and you don't even need huge fish to do it. Oh, boy, I, had, I got hit. They just let it fall back down there, see if something else will eat it. I pulled it out a little bit further away from the bank there. May not get bit. Nope, something got me right in. I felt him thump it. <laughs> you just feel thump. Another sunfish. You get on a good school, these things. They're in there. Good numbers. I want to get repositioned here. The wind is not blowing hard. It's moving me along here on this ledge. Just a nice cruising speed to be making casts and stuff, but you, you get off the pedals a minute and you get blown up on the bank. There we go. Goodness, he was hooked good. All right, little sunfish, you lucky I caught you when you did because you're getting to go home. All right, y'all, let me spin around here, get myself repositioned, and we'll make a few more casts, see if I can get some more. Actually, a pretty good cast I just made, y'all. See if we can get something on it. I do. I got something on it. I knew. I was like, that's a good cast. I didn't hit no trees. Didn't get my line wrapped up or nothing. It's like, I'm going to get something on that. Sure as the world. Another one of these sunfish. You know, I was just thinking. I wasn't catching these sunfish right away. I'm wondering if they're just up really close to the bank this morning. And maybe I wasn't reaching them there early on because I had them overhanging trees. I couldn't get right on the bank in those areas where I first started out at. Well, they, they could have just been in there in good numbers and I never got my bait to them possibly. But there's another good cast I just made. Let's see if we get eat on it. Something's hitting me. Sure did. They are right up against that bank. Another, another sunfish. These things are a lot of fun, y'all. I don't know how widespread they are. I know we got a bunch of them here in East Tennessee. Pretty much every body of water I fish around here. And boy, they are ornery things. They don't want to calm down for nothing. Get out of here. <laughs> but, uh, they're pretty prevalent here in East Tennessee, but I don't know how widespread they are throughout the country. Well, two good casts, and there I am in a tree. I believe we got us one more right there. We do. Get this one over here. This one's going to be the last one of the trip right here, y'all. This gulp that he ate, I've got a take a look at it here but this is probably going to be the end of this particular gulp it was hanging on by a thread a minute ago look at that thing ain't much left of it so this little sunfish i'm gonna let him go we're gonna call that one the end of the trip i gotta get out of here and go play good boyfriend today and go on this old farm tour down there at sweetwater valley farms that the girlfriends want to do so we can see how cheese is made and buy us some locally made cheese that's how i'm gonna spend my afternoon today guys think about that while y'all having fun doing whatever y'all are doing but uh anyway i told her i was like you know honey you may not want to know how cheese is made i don't know how cheese is made but fun fact about me back when i was 17 i spent three days working at a sausage factory yeah I, I don't eat sausage anymore but uh anyway yeah so i told her i was like honey you may not want to go down there and learn how cheese is made but nevertheless she wants to do it so i'm gonna go take this dang farm tour today and we're gonna go down there and do that and buy some cheese but um, out here this morning fun trip i mean got a lot of action mostly just smaller three inch size four inch size bluegill which i'll edit a bunch out but you know i just took a section of this ledge here and just been working my way on down it and there's fish all up and down through here bluegill sunfish bass you name it they're just out here in good numbers and you catch the heck of them there 
catch the heck out of them, I should say, on that gulp. So uh, I got me a few here in the bucket. I'm going to switch out that water here when I get back to the ramp and get them back home there and get them on the aerator, put some blocks of ice in there just to cool the water down and hopefully keep them alive here for two or three days until my next catfishing trip. And if I can, well, you'll see them in the next catfishing video. And if they die off before then, well, I'll just make fertilizer for the garden out of them. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.